Grace and peace, my brothers and sisters, grace and peace. My name is Brother Yehuda, and today's topic is the priesthood of Christ and the second coming of Christ. Sin put away by Christ's sacrifice. Now we're going to be in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 23 to 28. And I will read. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified. With these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entering into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now here we have a great a great gospel story, a great gospel divine revelation right here that is great to speak about is 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 beautiful because we must know the duty of our heavenly father in christ what's the protocol because a lot of people get they, they don't really don't understand the the importance and how how what the order is that God put together for us to have salvation through Christ Jesus. Now, in this last part of the chapter, the apostles goes on to tell us what the Holy Ghost has signified to us by the legal purification of the patterns of the things in heaven, and fearing here the necessities of better sacrifice to consecrate the heavenly things themselves. Now, the necessity of purifying the patterns of the things in heaven. We're going to go in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 23. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. That's in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 23. This necessity arises both from the divine appointment which must always be obeyed and from the reason of that appointment which was to preserve a proper resemblance between the things typifying and the things typified it is observable here that the sanctuary sanctuary of god on earth is a pattern of heaven and communion with god in his sanctuary is to his people a heaven upon earth and the necessity that the heavenly things themselves should be purified with better sacrifices than of bulls and goats so in other words the the sacrifice the, the heavenly the, the heavenly things themselves should be purified with better sacrifice than the bulls and goats. So in other words, the sacrifice that was in the Old Testament was done with bulls and goats and rams. The second sacrifice must be much better than that in order for it to take away sins. That was just uh, an act in the Old Testament to bring them. It couldn't take away sin. That's, let's put it that way. It was just an act so they can be conscious of this sin and know that they don't want to put away their their best animal they should be merciful to the animal and don't want to kill the animal anymore so it's like a mindful thing but the the real lamb that's going to come 
is to come is going to take away the sin completely. So it's like an order that God had had to do to get us to be free from sin through Jesus Christ. Glorious thing, divine knowledge of God is just brilliant. So in other words, so that the the better the better pattern would be Christ. That sacrifice. That's better than the bulls and the goat sacrifice that they did in the old time. Way better. That's that's can pay the ransom of sin. And must therefore be consecrated with better sacrifice. These heavenly things are the privilege of the gospel state. Begun in grace perfected in glory these must be ratified by a suitable sanction or consecration and this was the blood of Christ the pure blood that's that's the only type of blood that can take away sin it's pure blood and the blood of Christ is that blood that was able to take away the sin now it is very evident that the sacrifice of Christ is infinitely better than those of the law, with the law of Moses. The, the way the way they did it in the Old Testament is much better than that sacrifice. Christ, Christ's blood is much better than the laws of Moses. From the places in which the sacrifices under the law and that under the gospel were offered, those under the law where the holy places made with hands which are but figures of the true sanctuary so in other words um, we're going to go into the book of hebrews chapter 9 verse 24 for christ is not entered in a holy places made with hands which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of god for us so in other words he's not dwelling in mount sinai no more that's considered bondage to God he's telling us not to go back there he don't want us going into the Old Testament that covenant has been broken it's been abolished we're not in that law no more and now we in a whole new covenant that covenant the, the first covenant has been void we broke the, our foreign fathers broke that covenant so it can't be fixed no more so a person can't be if they're telling you that we have to do these laws and these ordinances they are out of line because they're that's that's not the doctrine that's not the way god wants it to be he wants that to be taken away that's the sin that's taken away because that brought us to sin so we have we under a pure and divine nature of life right now we under heavenly things right now we're not under the the the, the bulls and the goats and the things made with man's hands we are under more divine justice right now. And that was in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 24. Now, Christ's sacrifice, though offered upon earth, was by himself carried up into heaven and is there present and is there presented in a way of daily intercession. For he appears in the presence of God for us. He has gone to heaven not only to enjoy the rest and receive the honor due to him, but to appear in the presence of God for us and to present our persons and our performance performances to answer and rebuke our adversity and accusers to secure our interests, to perfect all our affairs and to prepare a place for us. For the sacrifice themselves, we're going to go in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 26. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, has he appeared to put away sin by sacrifice of himself. That's in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 26. Those under the law were the lives where the lives and blood of others creatures of a different nature from the from the offerers 
the blood of beasts, a thing of small value, and which would have been of none at all in this matter, had it not had a typical respect to the blood of Christ. But the sacrifice of Christ was oblation of himself. Christ offered his own blood, truly called by virtue of virtue of the hypothetical union, the blood of God, and therefore of infinite value. For the frequent repent, repent, from the frequent repetition of legal sacrifices, this shows the imperfection of that law. So in other words, the law of Moses was imperfect. It was not perfect. But it just seems to, to, to me, a lot of people still want to stick with that law because it's showing people they want to, they, they like the outfits, which is meaningless. They like to act like they're holier than thou. So they, you know, they, they do all these ordinances and, and it was a waste of time because that's not what we're under right now. If you really want to serve God, you got to serve him in his truth and in his spirit. You can't go in your own way of thinking because then you're just doing your own thing. You're working tradition of man, precepts of man. So by through Christ, we live through Christ. He's our high priest. He's our teacher. He's our master. We follow what he says. We hear ye him, like the Father said. This shows the imperfection of that law, but it is the honor and perfection of Christ's sacrifice that being no once offered it was sufficient to all the ends of it and indeed the contrary would have would have been absurd for then Christ must have been still dying and rising again and ascending and then again descending and dying and the great work had been always and always doing Christ would have had to keep doing it over and over again if it was of the blood of bulls and lambs. And always to do. And never finished. Which would be as contrary to reason as it is to revelation. And to the dignity of Christ's person. For now once in the end of the world has Christ appeared. To put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. The gospel is the last dispensation of the grace of God to man. From the efficiency of the legal sacrifices and the efficiency of Christ's sacrifices. The legal sacrifices could not of themselves put away sin. That was the, the sacrifices of the law, of the bulls and rams, it could not put away sin. Sin would still have lain upon us and had dominion over us. But Jesus Christ, by one sacrifice, has made an end of sin. He has destroyed the works of the devil. So the devil was keeping his people in that. He the one that started it through Adam and Eve, our first parents. And he was, subtile, he was a subtle serpent in the, in the garden. And beguiled Eve and told her that she'll be just like God by knowing good and evil. So she felt that was good to her ear. And she received that. So now she's disobedient. And then brought it to her husband. So now we fell into God didn't want us to know evil. So now that we know evil, evil comes upon us. And that's when they had, when they conceived their son, Abel. And they conceived Cain. Cain killed his brother out of jealousy. So this is what that was the first evilness, wickedness that was done by receiving the evil, the tree of knowledge and good and evil. God don't want us falling in that tree of knowledge of good and evil. When you're under the Mosaic laws, you're in the tree of knowledge and good and evil. God wants you to be in the tree of life, 
which is Christ. He is the tree of life. So when you come to Christ, you're in the tree of life. It's because you're, you're, you're looking for salvation with the hope of eternal life. This is the glory, the glorious thing that God had prepared for us, predestinated from the foundation of the world to free us from sin. Now the apostles illustrates the arguments from the appointment of God concerning men. We're going to go on the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 and 28. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. That's in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 27 and 28. And observe something like it in the appointment of God concerning Christ. The appointment of God concerning men contains in it two things. That they must once die or at least undergo a change equivalent to death. It is an awful thing to die, to have the vital knot loosened or cut asunder. All relations here dropped at once and end put to our probation and preparation in our preparation state and to enter into another world. Now it is great, it is great work and it's work that can be but once done and therefore had need to be well done. Now this matter of comfort to the godly that they shall die well and die but once but it is matter of terror to the wicked who die in their sins that they cannot return again to do that great work better it is appointed to men that after death they shall come to judgment to a particular judgment immediately after death for the souls return to God as to its judge to be determined to the its eternal state and men shall be brought to the general judgment at the end of the world this is the unalterable degree of God concerning men they must die we must die and we must be judged it is appointed for them for us and it is to be believed and seriously considered by us the appointment of God concerning Christ bearing some resemblance to the other Christ must be once offered to bear the sins of many of all the father had given to Christ of all who should believe in Christ's name Christ was not offered for any sin of his own Christ was wounded for our transgressions. God laid on Christ the iniquities of all his people, and those are many. Though not so many as the rest of mankind, yet when they are all gathered to Christ, Christ will be the firstborn among many brethren. It is appointed that Christ shall appear the second time without sin to the salvation of those who who look for Christ. Christ will then appear without sin at his first appearance. Though Christ had no sin of his own, yet Christ stood charged with the sin of many. Christ was the Lamb of God that bore upon him the sin of the world, sins of the world. And then Christ appeared in a form of sinful flesh, but Christ's second appearance will be without any such charge upon Christ. Christ having fully discharged it before, and then Christ's visage shall not be spoiled, but shall be exceedingly glorious. This will be to the salvation of all who look for Christ. Christ will then perfect their holiness, their happiness, their number shall then be accomplished and their salvation completed. It is the distinct, dis, 
distinguishing character of true believers that they are looking for Christ, looking to Christ by faith, looking for Christ by hope and holy desires. Look for Christ in every duty, in every ordinance, in every providence now and expect Christ's second coming and are preparing for it. And though it will be sudden destruction to the rest of the world who mock at the report of it, it will be eternal salvation and eternal life to those who look for it through our Lord Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus' name, may God be the glory as I walk, live, and pray in your image and likeness, the fruit of the Spirit. I come in love and leave in peace grace and peace and much love and blessings to you and your family. Have a blessed day, my brothers and sisters. Amen.